Hi everybody, welcome to Sweet and Sour. My name is Slim Jim, I'm filling in for Gary Mitchell tonight. Gary's away on leave, which is lucky for him, I suppose. Listen, we've got four fantastic panellists that will be debating and discussing some of these marvellous letters that we've got through. The first letter is, are large and glamorous weddings simply a waste of money? Uh, our second letter is, watching porn now, a normal rite of passage for teenagers. I'm sure that's going to evoke a pretty ribald response between our pa uh, panellists. And our third letter is, are most men leaving the boys club mentality behind? Let's hope so. We'll see you on the other side of this opener. Look forward to another great sweet and sour. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for sweet and sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Pour some sugar on me, baby. It's time for Sweet and Sour. How's it got some chili? It's time for Sweet That's a very, very lucky number. Why is it so lucky? Because we've got some fantastic <laughs> panellists. They're going to be debating and discussing these uh, incredible letters that we've got. Let's kick it off introducing Lewis. Lewis, great to have you back. Thank you, sir. You're no stranger to Sweet and Sour. No, no, no. I, I love it here. I come every every time I'm called. <laughs> I come. Lovely. Well, that's good to see, because I didn't call you, but Gary did, or Gary's team did. Let me ask you, Lewis, what have you been up to? Give us a bit of a quick Mate, I've been very busy. Off the couch, springtime, but spring came early for me, like two months early, so I'm off the couch. No more Netflix. You've been renovating my bathroom. <laughs> I'm doing bookings <laughs> for living with uh, living landscapes, if you need the landscaping, trees done, let Weeds. me know. <laughs> and awesome. also, I love flooring. If you need your floorboards done, give me a bell. The, the details are down there. And uh, yeah, maybe flat stick. Well, it sounds like you've been flat stick. Yeah. Margie, I, all I have to do is, is watch, look at your Facebook page, and I feel like I've gone on holidays. <laughs> you know, I, I read it for five minutes, and I'm sort of jet lagged. Uh, you've been almost everywhere in the last 12 months again. Yeah, I have, yeah. Last for living, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Israel, Italy. Yeah, I did uh, all the UNESCO sites of Greece. UNESCO? Yeah, I hired a car. <laughs> That's one tour I would never have thought about went. taking. Um, Unbelievable. Yeah, Sincerely. Sure it, would be. it was great. Greek yeah. people are fabulous, aren't they, Harry? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Glad, glad you're back with us, Margie. Thank you're you. also one of our perennial favourites. Narelle Bell, yeah. you've always like, oh, been extremely busy. Yes. Tell us about the Karen Carpenter show. It's just going through the roof. It's a lot of fun. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, we've got our next show coming up on the 20th of October at Manager Performing Arts. Good. And then, that's a great venue. Oh, it's beautiful. It is a lovely And venue. then back at the Astor Theatre on the 9th of December, that's even Christmas more, uh, special. One of the best Art Deco theatres in, in WA. We've got some beautiful theatres here in Perth. We certainly we have. have. Uh, well, I wish you great. best. I Thank hope you. the sales are massive. Yeah. Harry, great if you, if you join us, I should say. Yeah, no. You're no stranger here, to no, Sweet no, and Sour. Yeah, no, no stranger. I've been here before with all these three wonderful people. First time we've <laughs> met you, but yeah, you've been absolutely sensational. Oh, thank you very and, much. And uh, in our area, which is finance, so we help Lewis with uh, things like paying for renovations and using <laughs> goodwill like he does. And he's all helping. Um, the, the, Gary usually asks me uh, what's happening with the market. Well, I don't think interest rates are going to go up this side of Christmas, so that's good news for everybody for Melbourne Cup. Okay. They're going to have more money to spend. Well, that's good. So yeah. most of the banks are hinting at the fact they're going to raise their interest rates. A couple Last of them. week, 1.5%, I hear. Yeah, no, 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 no. They've had a small marginal increase, but one of the major just came out today saying it's not going to increase. It's it's very, very minimal, but the main thing is we'll always have a home loan. We'll always pay that little bit extra so that when they do go up, you're actually prepared for it. You don't have awesome. what they call a shock. Heads That's down, sure. people. Let's get to, yeah. into these letters. Uh, the first letter is uh, titled, I do, dear Mitch slash Slim and panellists. <laughs> <laughs> I've been invited to so many friends' weddings already this year, and I have to tell you, gay weddings are the most fun. I've enjoyed each of them immensely. I'm planning to marry next year and it's going to cost a packet. My boyfriend, th uh, my boyfriend threw me a curveball when he asked quite seriously, why is it that we have to be plugged into the wedding circus just because it's always the done thing? I sat back and I thought about it and he might be right. I've never thought about it before. We do it because it's always been a, an accepted custom. Think about it for more than five minutes and you come to the conclusion that all the dreams of a glamorous once in a lifetime fairy tale wedding followed by an eternity of wedded bliss are pretty much just an illusion designed to keep us plugged into perpetuating the very merry merry-go-round. Those who have done it need everyone else to do it as well it seems. So panellists, are weddings just an expensive cultural waste? Is marriage a total con? I'm totally committed to my boyfriend and he to, and he to me and it will stay that way until we don't feel like that anymore, whether we go through the circus or not. So I'm thinking now, why would I? And that's from Larissa from the Barton in South Australia. 
And we're going to start with you, Margie. What's your response to that letter? Larissa, I'm very sad for you if you think all of that because it's all your own choice. The wedding can be anything you like. It should be about all the days after the wedding, not about the wedding. Make it as simple as you want to be. I'm an old-fashioned sort of gal. And what uh, does old-fashioned mean, though? Well, it means that... If Church, you want, wedding, yeah, big reception. Uh, well, no, it doesn't have to be a big friends. reception. It just has to be a joyful celebration. And I love that sort of commitment to each other. I think it's a little bit sad that it's getting a little bit lost. And it's getting lost in all these sort of huge details. I actually have an events mm. company. Yeah. And, you know, you would not believe the things that people want to do. And I think, actually, you can just stand with him and hold a little bunch of flowers mm, and you can be married. You actually don't need to do anything else. So, you know, my advice, keep that in mind. The rules are only your rules. Lewis, what yes. do you feel about this? Have you been married? I have been married, And yes. have you had a big... Did you have a big wedding, a big reception? It was beautiful. It was huge. Everyone was there. Yeah. There was one dude wearing jeans and went... What are you doing wearing jeans for my wedding? Yeah. So I sent him home to get changed. But um, like, like my girl here said, it's subjective and it's everyone's personal taste. But in my opinion, I'd have like a massive wedding. Massive wedding, massive reception, because it's the best part of getting married. Because then, you know, after that, you just got to live with the person that you think you know, that you don't really know, that you find out about that you divorce later. <coughs> yeah, well, that's, that's an interesting slant on it. Mm. Let me tell you. Harry, what do you feel? You're oh, married, look, obviously. Look, big ethnic weddings are fantastic. Oh. It's, you know, you sit down, do all the seating arrangements, get all the cousins that haven't Tim talked Wilson. in 20 years <laughs> and try and work out where they're sitting. And then during the wedding, they come up and tell you how come I'm sitting down the back when I should be sitting up the front mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. You'll miss out all that excitement if you, if you don't have a big wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the stress and the anxiety of it all, you know, just panicking about everything being right. Look, um, I think that at the end of the day, a wedding really boils down to husband, wife, or grooms and groommen, whatever, whichever way it goes, is, is to have a great day, have a good time and celebrate with the friends that you want to celebrate with because um, you've got to give with a warm hand because uh, when you're dead and buried, it's not going to matter. They're all going to be quick. Well, <laughs> I agree with Margie. I'm a bit old-fashioned as well. God but bless. less is more. You don't have to... Who's paying for the wedding? Sometimes parents chip yep. in and pay. Sometimes the two people that are getting married pay. But do what you want to do. If you yep. want to elope and go to Vegas and get married, because that's probably what I'd like to do, okay. um, do that. You don't have to... It's, the wedding's about you two guys, not the people that are coming. They're there to enjoy it with you. Exactly. Now, yeah. the question was po uh, put out there on social media for a response. <laughs> And uh, a large and glamorous wedding, simply a waste of money. 80% said yes. Wow. Which is pretty much agreeing mm. with everybody on the panel. Yep. And 20% um, said no. So that's a you know, fairly decisive sort of result. And uh, I think, you know, when it comes to weddings myself, I had a, I had a large wedding and it was a great, you know, celebration mm. of the yeah. family yeah. And, and the joining of two How families. How many people did you have? Oh, I think it was just short of 200. Oh, that's yeah, a lot yeah, these days. Was that's that just, it was. Was How that long just first cousins? No, it was it was more more friends really because yeah. our, our families are quite small. But yeah. no, it was a great celebration of, of, of getting together. You know. How many so, years, Jen? Have I been married? It was 1999. I got married. Ooh. So what's that? 19 oh, years. Yeah, yeah. 19, yeah, 19 years. years. That's a good innings. Not, well, yeah, doing the best I can, let me tell you. <laughs> the time's up for this segment. We'll be back on the other side of this ad. See you soon. <laughs> I'm for sweet and sour. Right here on Sweet and Welcome back to Sweet and Sour with this wonderful panel of people. Now, if you want to get hold of us via social media or we'll keep an eye on what's going on with Sweet and Sour via social media, go to the website, which is www.sweetandsour.net.au. You can also catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. That's about all the social media outlets you need. Now, we also got to mention the fact that for the person that's voted the, uh, the letter of today's show, they will win a, a movie ticket or movie tickets to see the house with a clock in its walls, thanks to Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. Has anybody seen the, the film? Fantastic. Oh, and Lewis has seen yeah. it. Yeah. Lewis has seen it. In it. They, awesome. they, you know, the girl oh, that's talking right. about yeah. earlier with the yeah. brownish, longish yeah. hair. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, so check that movie out. <laughs> Lewis thoroughly recommends it. <laughs> got a clock in it. Well, you know, but it's great of Natalie Cameron. Yeah. She's been a long-time supporter of Sweet and Sour and, and the same with the team at NRC Communications. Let's go on to our next letter. Dear panel, I'm somewhat disturbed. Sounds a bit like me. I found, <laughs> I found very... Ex this is not like me. I found very explicit pornographic material on my teenage boys' phones. They are 16 and 17, respectively. 
I know the desire for them to discover their sexuality is good and healthy, but I am uneasy with them having that type of material. You see, I want the boys to learn to respect women as women, not as sex objects. I feel these sites debase women. I'm no wowser, and my husband and I have occasionally indulged in similar media, and we enjoy that together. My husband and I respect each other, and we have a maturity that allows proper appreciation of the material, unlike the boys. Should I confront the boys or just confiscate their phones? Am I wrong to intervene at all? Additionally, I suspect they both have had sex as each has had a girlfriend and I've also found their, uh, their condoms. What? If this is the case, I'm pleased they are both being responsible, but what do I do about the porn, please? What do we do about the porn, Lewis? Okay. Tell us. Well, this is from Lisa Marie at Windermere in Victoria. Yeah, I personally thought there was too much porn on the internet, so I downloaded it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, well, Jeez, you must have a massive hard drive. Mate, <laughs> I hear that often, you know. <laughs> no, seriously, uh, well, when it comes to porn, you, they'll get bored of it sooner or later, you know, give it 10 or 20 years. <laughs> See, I've, I've got to find a, a maphrodite midget with a missing appendage <laughs> in order to get my Roger stomping, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. mm -mm. But the thing is, how nosy is this chicky oh, boat? You know what I mean? The guys are 16, 17, if she's bought the phones and she's paying for the phones, which she, she must be, right? Then child lock, no porn. Done. That's fair. But you can't keep kids away from porn because uh, it's yeah. everywhere. So you can actually child lock a phone? Contrary to a, a computer, yeah, I'm not too you, sure you, you can. Yeah, you can, you can oh, do fantastic. that. Fantastic. Well, if you're in ownership of it, yeah, I'm which here I think she is. But 16, 17, they'll be hungry for it, and the, they will, won't they? I mean, they're boys, so yeah, boys sure. are going to seek and, and find. But boys and girls would be. Girls. They're, 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 yeah. girls will be the same. Oh, I'm girl, sure. well, I wouldn't know because I. I well, let's I, ask Margie. Margie, yes. are girls that way inclined when they would, you know, discover their sexuality via porn? Sure, I think you know it's a, just the age of being curious, isn't it? Really, and I don't think it's anything unnatural. I don't think you need to overreact or anything like that. Yep. And I think as long as she's bringing up her family to think well, mm -hmm. they're going to few different things and they'll sort that out themselves. She needs to just chillax a little bit yeah. and enjoy the boys and not be so sort of dogmatic about everything. Yeah, but porn isn't, isn't exactly, uh, what do you call, real or... Um, but that's right, it's yeah, not real. It's not real. And, and you know what, if they've been brought up in a nice normal family, <laughs> they're going to see that and understand that. Narelle, it's just what's your opinion? Wait, 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 wait. I no. agree with Willis. I mean, not Willis. Willis, Willis. What, you, what you talking about, Narelle? <laughs> what you talking about, Narelle? <laughs> very snoopy, this uh, Lisa Marie. I mean, the, the you know, finding condoms. But look, they're going to watch it. Whether you confiscate it, they're going to go to their mate's house and watch it. You know, so why don't you just, just talk about it? Just bring it up and say, hey, listen, um, your dad and I, you know, we, we watch it. Look, we know you guys have been watching it a bit. Just sort of be a little bit casual about it. And that way they go, oh, okay, cool. You know, then hiding it and everything. Yeah, sure. I yeah. suppose at least, you yes. know, she's got a relationship with the kids that she can actually, obviously... Well, she doesn't, uh, does she? Well, she, I think she does. does I mean, she she's buy marching the, condom? the perimeter of the yeah. house every night. <laughs> she, she, she works for the, uh, what do they call condom it over here? It's not MI5, SCIS. <laughs> CIA. CIA. No, no that's America. America. A ASIC. ASIO. ASIO. That's exactly. Asia. 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 Look, what do you um, think, Harry? Look, uh, I de definitely think you're snooping around way too much. Yeah. I mean, uh, when we were boys, porn was National Geographic's. Mm. I mean, that's right. <laughs> the, puppy, the puppy New Guinea version. Yeah. That's exactly like, right. Oh. Like, and porn, porn is, porn is uh, look, it's everywhere. And I think that um, mm. if you're really concerned about it, then grab your husband, grab the boys, sit down night. on the, have a family night yeah. and just, you know, get it online and say, this is, this is what no. porn, make, this is what porn's day. looking like. Oh. That, <laughs> that will, Harry, I couldn't do that. I'd be that, that uncomfortable. That, that would freak them out. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's like when you go and visit your mum and dad and all of a sudden you flick over to SBS and they're jumping on each other. Yeah, and you know, that's like, true. Look at TV now. Yeah, yeah. Look, Actually, look, look at some, look at some of the rap videos. I yeah. mean, oh. it's like they, it's borderline soft porn, isn't just it? Just really? let him. Let Why him. Look at uh, me when he said rap video. Oh, I just didn't look at you. I looked at the pair of you over this yeah. side of the table. Just, just let you him be. Stop, and I agree with Maggie. Stop trying to turn into a police state. They've got to learn through their own experience. And as long as they're not looking at terrible porn. Then, uh, then just let them be free. That's it. Good advice, yeah. Harry. Now, for this uh, second letter, we put this to uh, social media. For your say, and your say was quite clear, is watching porn now a normal rite of passage for teenagers? 85% said yes, oh. and 15% said no. So that's pretty decisive.
You know, <laughs> Lewis is asking with a personal note to Harry, what's terrible porn? You know, I suppose it's, it's in the eye or the uh, reaction of the beholder, really. I can he tell you that much. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to getting on to our third letter, which is going to come on after the break. Thanks for joining us on Sweet and Sour. See you after this break. <laughs> Yo, what is it? We had to do an outro because our colours matched. Yeah, I like our colours and I love Sweet and Sour. Time for sweet and sour. Right here on. Sweet oh, welcome back to Sweet and Sour. We're having too much fun here, so let's get stuck into the uh, third letter of uh, today's show. Uh, dear panel, uh, sorry, the, the, uh, the, the heading is the mail room. M A L E. Dear panel, I am the sole female in an all male office. Most of the time, we get on, I get along pretty well. I tolerate their loutish, boyish behaviour, and they tolerate tolerate me and mine. That was, however, until we got a new boss. This guy hasn't got a clue. He's a bit older than the rest of us and tries to act cool by making sexist jokes and flirting with me. And I've kept quiet. Unfortunately, this is now filtered through to the other guys and they no longer treat me with the same respect as previously. I'm not sure whether I'm being overly sensitive to this new abrasive boss, but I figure the joking and teasing may have become a subtle form of bullying. I've always loved my job and I used to have a great rapport with my workmates. How can I get things to return to the way they were and what should I say to my boss and the boys? Have I left it too late? This comes from Kelly from Burnside in South Australia or from South Australia tonight. Harry, what do you think about that? Uh, well, I'm, I'm the exact opposite. I'm the only male in an all-female office. Oh. And, and how's um, that? Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> you, you find that okay? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, Days are good. <laughs> I know I'm alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, look, it's, look, it's fantastic. The, the, the thing is with the, um, the abrasiveness and, uh, and just the misbehaving, especially if he's overstepping the mark, I think you just need to pull him aside privately and say, mm. look, I just think you're overstepping the mark. If he pulls his head in, he, it's good. And if he doesn't pull his head in, then you need to go to someone else. I don't think anyone should have to put up with anyone disrespecting anybody mm. in the workplace. Totally agree. And uh, male yeah. or female, yeah. I agree. And uh, and I just think that I find sometimes, I mean, I do fall into that older generation of employer and what we could do 20 years ago or joke around with 20 years ago, it's we can't do today. Now, you just, yeah. you just can't exactly do it. right. You can't do it. And if you want to see what's changed, I mean, get on the train, you stand up for a girl and someone will jump down instead. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just things are different. So you just got you just got to have a, a subtle adjustment conversation with him, I think. What about you, Narell? What do you feel about this letter? I've worked in an uh, all-male office. Yeah, um, look, I, I like a joke, I do, and I might not have a... I shouldn't... Uh, look, all the ladies might ring up and complain in a minute, but I have got a, quite a thick skin, so I can take on a few jokes here and there, because yeah. that's what I do for a living. But I do understand also it can be taken too far if you yeah. allow it to be taken too far. Yep. Go in and talk to the guy and say, listen, I am going to take this further if you don't kind of pull oh, back yes. with these yeah. jokes. Um, you know, I can handle a little bit of a laugh in the office, but when it's derogatory and putting me down, you're making me feel uncomfortable. So I'm pre-warning you, yeah. um, I will get your legs broken if... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I, I will talk to someone yeah, before, about it. Before yeah. I get no, Mark, no. before somebody else's legs get broken... <laughs> and Mark, <laughs> uh, uh, before I ask Lewis, I should mention the fact that we had a, a... This went to social media again, and the question was, are most men leaving the boys' club mentality behind? 38% said yes. But 62% said no. So, Margie, on oh. the context of that result, what are you going to have to? What have you got to say about this letter? Look, I tend to work a lot with men, and mm. in amongst men, I've always enjoyed male company because they're light and easy. Yeah. And often, you know, someone takes it a little bit far, but I just use my humour to sort of bring it back. That's you right, know, yeah. hey, big yeah. boy, you know, settle down yeah. there. Yeah. And you know, sort of nicely let them know in a happy way. Actually, my line's here. You just went yes. below it. Yeah. But yeah. I think if you make a big drama of it, that's then true. you're going to turn everyone against. Yeah. And I think that's going to be a harder hill to climb yeah. afterwards. Mm. So I would just, you know, in a very light, happy way, just sort of let him know that he needs to lift it up a little bit. Yeah. Lois, big boy, mm -hmm. as you said. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's true, you know, my grandfather. <laughs> <don't>, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think we're all on the same page with this one, aren't we? Oh, we I are, think yeah. so. As long as she nips it in the bud, as soon as the bud is blossoming, so to speak. So as soon as the outline, just go, listen, yeah. man, that's a little bit yeah. right, cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Both. Sorted. Yeah. But that's the only way to deal with it now, eh? Yeah, because I, I, so I don't mind an innuendo myself, yeah. but I find my innuendos complimentary. Oh, really? I, I love that red top but that's on That's a lovely way to do it, though, well, is like to compliment beautiful. somebody, make them feel good about themselves. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think which is, I think, a great way of approaching life. Mm. Look, people, we've had a wonderful time tonight. It's been There's great, no two mate. ways about yeah, it. You've done a good job. Oh, mm. well, thanks yeah. very much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't give up a day job. So thank you, Harry. Oh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Narelle. Margie, as always, it's lovely. I can't wait to watch you in Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, thank you. Come and see you at the yeah. quarry. In the Are very start of November. No, I'm Pontius Pilate. Oh, so, oh, the wise so, And very, it's been a great pleasure. Cheers, it's Great to have you here. No. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, we're very fortunate because we've got some fantastic entertainment to uh, to finish up with. So our time is up. But before we go, let's have a, uh, a throw over to the, the corner over here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to Jareth Raycraft with a great song called Cold Out. Look forward to having your company again on Sweet and Sour. Yeah. Across this town, I walk by feet. Arms are heavy, knees are weak. Won't you pick me up when I fall down? When I fall down. Traveled miles to see your face. I traveled train to a different place. Won't you hold me close when it's cold out? Winter's coming my way. It feels like you're so far away Please don't forget yesterday I just wish that you had stayed A little longer when it's cold out I run through grassland, I run through rain Lost all air, my chest in pain Won't you fill my lungs when I start to drown Won't you bring me close when it's cold out mm -hmm. Winter's coming my way And it feels like you're so far away Please don't forget yesterday I just wish that you had stayed A little longer when it's cold out Little longer when it's cold out Won't you bring me close when it's cold